Hey guys, how's it going? It's Dylan again, and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to continue the UI training and I want to extend the functionality of the window. So let me show you how it works right now. If I hit play, you'll see that I can, basically the setting window is showing I can exit out or I can click on settings just to bring it back on. So what I want to do is I want to add an effect Basically, when you click it, it'll fade in. When you click on the X, it'll fade out. So to do that, I'm gonna start doing some scripting. So I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use a canvas group to do the fading. So let me show you how to do that. We're gonna start with the C sharp script, and I'm gonna call it, I'm gonna call it UI component. And this is gonna be a component that any type of UI that we want to use is gonna is gonna inherit from. So now just let's just double click it. Okay, let's just wait for Visual Studio Code to open. Excellent. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I want to require a component. And then this is gonna be of type of canvas group. Excellent. And the reason for that is because if you use, if you look at the canvas group tool tip, it says a canvas placeable element that can be used to modify children's alpha ray casting and enable state. So I'm gonna use this for anything that, any UI that has this component associated with, I can actually change the alpha value. Okay, excellent. So the next thing that I wanna do is I want to add some private variables. And the first private variable that I'm gonna use is gonna be a start hidden. Cause I don't wanna show the UI if this variable is set to true. So I'm gonna say by default, it's gonna be set to true. And this is going to be a serializable fill. The other one that I'm going to add is basically going to be the duration of the fade. So let me just say private flow fade duration. And I'm going to have it set to 1.0. Let's say one second by default. And we also are going to do a serializable fill. Excellent. Now the next thing is I want to be able to track the fade because I need it to determine if I'm com if I completed doing the fade transition or if I haven't. So that one it's going to be called fade value, and I'm just going to set it to zero. We're not going to expose that because I'm just going to use that for internal purposes. Excellent. So then the next thing that I'm going to use is I'm, I'm going to need the canvas group that I actually assign it assign to this component. And we can just gonna call we can call that one canvas group. Excellent. Now in the in the star instead of doing star, I'm actually just gonna create an initialize meta, and we're just gonna call it. It's gonna make it public. In here, we're just gonna say canvas group equal get component, and then this is where we're gonna get our canvas group that is associated with this component or game object. Now we're gonna check to see if the start hitting is set to true. If it is set to true, we're gonna set the alpha on the canvas group to zero. Meaning that we don't wanna show this component. Perfect. Now the next thing that I gotta do is I want to, I need to add a couple of methods. One is gonna be to fade in, so we're gonna need a I enumerator and then it's gonna be fade in. And for now, we're just gonna do yell return no. Just make sure that the, so that the compiler doesn't complain. And we're also gonna need a fade out. Excellent. So now what I, what I'm gonna be doing is I'm actually gonna be calling this from the from the child object, meaning from the one that is inherited from this class. So let's just do some changes on the window. So if we go to our window and we go to the the class, you can see that I'm inheriting from mono behavior. I'm just gonna change that to say inherit from UI component. And then on the star method, that's when I'm gonna actually call base initialize so that we can actually call the initialize method on the parent, which is what's gonna determine if this is set to zero or one so that we show it or not show it. Perfect, and let me actually make a change here. I'm gonna rename this to star hidden, lowercase, just to follow the proper the proper casing. Excellent, so now, now let's work on the fading, 
on the fading loop. So what I'm going to be doing is I need to track, I need to keep track of the, a, a value that I'm going to be called the lerp. And I'll show you what that is. The other thing that I'm going to do is I need a while loop. So I'm going to need to do a check to make sure that we are less than one because I'm going to be executing this while loop as long as the value hasn't reached the maximum alpha value, which is going to be one for all cases. Then the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to use this variable called lerp and I'm going to increment it by time delta and I'm going to divide it by the fade by a fade duration, which I haven't added that I need to add. Well, I actually did add it, which is actually here. So in this case is one, so we're gonna grab the delta time and I divided it by the fade duration. So that's gonna be the, the interpolation value that we're gonna use. Then our fade value, it's going to be equal math.lerp. Then we're gonna use the fade value that we, the fade value that we have right now and we're gonna interpolate that to one, and then we're gonna use our lerp. Excellent. So then the next thing that I'll do is just yell, and then return null. Excellent. So just to recap, what I'm doing right, ne right now, it's basically doing a while loop where I'm checking to make sure that I haven't reached the maximum alpha value then I'm using a lerp to do the interpolation from the current lerp, the current fade value to one and then passing in the variable lerp and then returning. So we're gonna do something similar on the on the fade out. So I'm just gonna basically just copy that entire code. We're still gonna be we're still gonna need to do this except th in this case I'm gonna say when it, when it's greater than zero because we're gonna go in the other direction. And instead of saying fade value and then comma one, I'm gonna say fade value comma zero because we're gonna interpolate to zero. And then everything else should be just as it is. And I don't need the update. And everything here looks perfect. Okay, so now let's go into our window. And then in our window, if you remember, we have this game object that set active equal to true and then game object as it active equal to false. So I'm gonna remove this because I actually want to do a couple of things. So I'm going to add a new variable on the top, which is gonna be private and then co coroutine. And this is gonna be, we can just call it window state coroutine. And I'm gonna use this to basically store the coroutine that I'm currently executing. So for instance, if I create a coroutine that it's going to get executed by the open and then the, the close executes another coroutine, I want to make sure that I'm stopping the one that is currently in progress and executing the new one. So that's what I'm going to use this for. I'm going to say if coroutine equal does not equal null, then what I'm going to say is a stop coroutine and then we're going to stop the coroutine. And we'll do the same thing on the close method. We can fix the indentation. Excellent. Then the other thing that I'm going to do is I'm actually going to, now I'm going to execute the coroutine. And because I'm inherited from, from UI component, now I can just say fade in, which is the method that I just created to fade in. And then on the close method, I can do simply fade out. And I think everything looks fine. Then my, let me just review everything. So we have our required component, which is the canvas group, a variable to determine if it's true, if it's show by default. And we have our fade duration, fade value, and everything looks fine. Actually, let me see. We actually don't need this. This was for just to make the compiler happy. Okay, perfect. Now let's go into Unity. And I wanna show you what shows now when I when I look at the script that is associated with the window. So let's the, let the compile. Okay, so it looks, looks fine. Let's go to the inspector. And as you notice, I have a canvas group associated with the window. So if you don't, make sure that you add it manually. The, the other thing that I have now in the in the window script is a fade, a fade duration. This is the duration that is going to 
basically execute. So if I want to do a fade for five seconds, you can set it to five seconds. I think one for demonstration purposes is fine. The start hitting, it's the component that I, that I, if I want to allow this to show, you know, by default, I could uncheck it. But if I want to show it all the time, I can leave it check, which is what I'm going to do here, actually to hide it on start, which is what we're going to be doing for the most part. And then if I want to show it, we can click on it and looks like we have a problem because it didn't do anything. So let's look at what we did and let's go into here. And let me just make sure that everything, everything is correct. So we got our delta time divided by our fade duration. And that looks fine. Okay, let's just look at, let's just look at this one more time. Let's go to our console and then hit play. If this doesn't work, we'll add some locks. And we'll click it. And it looks like we're not seeing the window. In fact, we, we, should actually, we should be seeing this alpha value set to a one, which is not happening. So let's see what's happening. And if I look at the component, looks like I'm getting the component. And then in here, I'm calling initialize. Okay, so something is not working. So let's do this. Let's go into the fade in. And what I'm gonna do here, so I'm actually just going to do a debug.log so we can see our alert value. Excellent. Oh, I see what we're doing. We, we're actually calculating the fade value where we're never setting the, the alpha value on the canvas. So that's great, but we need to actually do this. So fade value, you probably noticed it before I did. And we also need to do the same thing here. So we're, we're calculating it, but we were never setting it. Okay, excellent. So let's go back into Unity. Let's go and hit play. and let it compile now if i click on the open it opens up if i close it it closes i think there's one thing that we need to fix we actually need to go back to our window and then i never i actually created a variable called window state core routine but i never set it so make sure that you set that and we're going to do the same thing here because i need to keep track of the last the last core, core routine that was executed in order for me to stop it. Otherwise, if I hit open and then quickly close it, it might not work. So let's go back into Unity and let's increment the fade duration to three. And let's let it compile. Okay, perfect. So now let's go into play mode. And we can hit, there we go. So three seconds and then we can see we can see that it's working just fine. So another thing that I wanted to do here is I wanted to show you that we could create multiple windows. You can actually just rename this one to settings. And then I'm going to create another one that is called, maybe this is the levels window. We might be showing different, different levels in this other window. So, cause I didn't show you that we could actually because we made a script that controls the window, we can control also the header title and other things. So this is gonna be levels. Excellent, and I think that's that's perfect. And on this one, we can actually just uncheck the start hitting so that we show, we show it automatically. And we can hit play. And you'll notice that now we have two windows, one that is called levels and then another one that is called settings as soon as I open it and they're independent of each other so if I if I close this one the other one doesn't affect the other one and that's because we have multiple game objects controlling different mono behaviors so that's everything that I wanted to show you in this episode I'm going to be posting the source code from this session as soon as I'm done with this video and if you guys have any questions let me know through the comments and don't forget to subscribe to the channel and also share this video. Thank you guys.